Hello everyone and welcome back for another edition of 8 Minutes with Aaron. I am of course your host Aaron and today we are going to discuss Monday Night Raw from May 6, 2024. So let's get rolling with a fresh edition of this guy right here, Aaron. So WWE Raw started off tonight with Judgment Day coming out with Damian Priest talking about how he went over Jey Uso on Saturday's Backlash. He also went and told Finn Balor and J.D. Funko Pop McDonough that he was sorry for the way he acted following the match, giving them a nice hug and letting them know there were no hard feelings. Dominic even joined in on the fun. Finn Balor, of course, was in the first match of the King of the Ring tournament. Unfortunately, Drew McIntyre was not able to compete due to his little elbow injury suffered by the hands of CM Punk. So Finn Balor thought he had a buy into the first round. Out came Adam Pierce, who said, Oh, no, 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 you will have a match. And it is against this guy, of course, who I do not care about. You, Jay Uso. So Jay Uso and Finn Balor had the first match in the King of the Ring tournament. The match was okay. A lot of kicks, a lot of high flying moves and stuff like that into the outside. There was no interference at all. Adam Pierce had sent that back, everyone else from Judgment Day. And it ended up with Jay Uso getting the spear on Finn Balor. Then there was Drew McIntyre in the back telling Adam Pierce, listen, I don't understand what's wrong with you. How are you going to put Jay Uso in this match when you know the history that we have between each other? Adam Pierce is like, look, man, I, I just got to find somebody. Maybe you should just go home. And as soon as Drew McIntyre got in his car and sped off, who came? CM Punk. CM Punk rolled up and came out and said, Hey, Adam Pierce, I'm here to kick Drew McIntyre's face in. And Adam Pierce is like, Oh, he just left. CM Punk walked into the ring. They followed him with that cool camera shot, followed him down through the backstage area, out to Mike Lucellini. I can't do it as good as Jim Cornette does it, but I knew it was clobbering time. CM Punk came to the ring and did his shit. He said, Hey, Drew McIntyre, I'm going to chill in this ring and hold this show hostage until you come back. Why don't you fans go tweet, hey, Drew McIntyre, CM Punk is in the ring waiting for you. Of course, Drew McIntyre didn't show up. CM Punk basically put Drew in his place saying, listen, man, I don't know if you're either mad at me or you're just obsessed over me. But wherever I find you, I am going to beat your ass. That was the whole gist of the thing. We love CM Punk. CM Punk! CM Punk! Then we had to, of course, get to the next match, which was the first round of the Queen of the Ring tournament between EO Sky of Damage Control and Natalia. I could tell you from the beginning of the match, not even before it even started, Natalia was not going to win. Unfortunately, Natalia's kind of like that veteran who everybody's going to go over. I don't think she's going to win any more title matches. I don't think she's going to go anywhere from where she's at in the mid card. EO Sky picked up a victory after she did that moonsault off the top rope. Damage Control had a little bit of interference in the match, but not enough to overcome Natalia. So, I don't know. Really didn't protect Natalia. Didn't make Io Sky look strong. She's trying to get the women's title. I guess since they moved from SmackDown to Raw, she's trying to get, you know, Becky's title until Rhea Ripley comes back and murders the shit out of everybody else. Uh, the next match was actually pretty decent. It was between Elo Dragunov versus Ricochet. That was a fantastic match. A lot of great flips, a lot of dives to the outside. Ricochet is on a whole nother level. He is insane. I wish he didn't face uh, Dragunov in the first round. He just came from NXT. He was a former NXT champion. So he wasn't going to lose this match. Ricochet had no chance at all. They did give the match some time. They make both superstars look great. And Dragunov won with like this hammer freaking like punch off the top rope. After a suplex, I believe, off the top, you know, Ricochet tried to do his 450 splash and Dragunov caught him, threw him down, and then did the hammer. After the match, they did shake hands. It was pretty good. Pretty good. The next one was the Queen of the Ring first round tournament with Ivy Niles or Zoe Stark. Now, this match could have gone either way because both female competitors don't have a lot of wins. Zoe Stark did come out on top of Ivy Niles. They both are very strong. Both stood a lot of strength in this match, picking each other up over their heads, holding them up high for suplexes and shit for like 10, 15 seconds. Both women are extremely strong. I would not want to fuck with either of these women. They are just insane. 
The next match we had was Bronson Reed versus Chad Gable. How, how many times are we going to have to see this match? Hopefully this will be the last one we see on Monday Night Raw. They only had like about five minutes of action until Sami Zayn. Came. This guy right here came into the ring and started beating up Chad Gable. I don't understand how Sami Zayn is the Intercontinental Champion and supposed to be a face champion, yet he's doing all this heelish shit, like a hell of a kick on Chad Gable last week, and then this week he's interfering and beating up Chad Gable and Bronson Reed. Dude, come on. Bronson Reed, of course, stood out on top after he dropped Sami Zayn and Chad Gable with, I think, a back suplex or German suplex or whatever the hell he does. And then he walked in the back and told Adam Pearce, you want to do something about it? I want that Intercontinental Championship. I don't give a shit about Sami Zayn. I don't give a shit about you. I don't give a shit about Chad Gable. I want that belt. So apparently it's going to be a triple threat match at the King and Queen of the Ring in three, four weeks at the next pay-per-view, and it will be a triple threat between Bronson, Sammy, and Chad Gable. It should be a good match. I don't think Sami Zayn is going to lose. It's his first title defense on a pay-per-view, and look at Cody. He won, right? Here we go. Oh, my own. Goddamn music is stuck in my head. The next thing was an in-ring segment with Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch is now the new women's champion on Raw. Yay. Yeah. Can you see my enthusiasm? There's none there. I'm not a big Becky Lynch fan. I'm kind of bored of her. I know she's carrying the title because she's a big name, and that's really all they got right now until they establish more superstars on the women's roster. But Liv Morgan came out, of course, and was, you know, did her old spiel that she's been doing the last two weeks, telling Becky that she's the reason that she's champion. She's the one who took out Rhea Ripley. She did something that, you know, she beat Nia Jax last week. And Becky promised her a title match, which she's going to get at the King and Queen of the Ring tournament. So Liv is all happy. Yay. Then Damage Control surrounded the ring. And as they were coming in the ring, Liv Morgan, who, you know, got back to back with Becky Lynch at first, like she was going to help her out, rolled out of the ring. And who came out next? NXT, uh, Valkyrie something, who had a match with Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai, of course, lost. And... Layer of Valkyrie is her name, and she won the match because it is her game. She's really strong, too. Which led us to the final match of the night, which was probably my favorite match of the night. Round three between Gunther, the Ring General, versus Sheamus. Uh, it was good back and forth. The color so a lot of slapping, a lot of punching. Of course, that's all you heard. All that smacking of the skin and shit like that. It was a really good match. I gotta say, it was really cool to see Sheamus back and kicking ass. He got a couple of bro kicks in. Unfortunately, Ludwig Kaiser da -da 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 -da, was at the ring and assisted. Gunther was messing up with Sheamus' leg. And by the time Sheamus got two bro kicks, his leg was so injured, he couldn't even extend the foot up to kick Gunther in the face. Gunther, of course, took advantage of that. Got him in like a half crab kind of thing well not Boston crab because it was kind of the side and he leaned down real tight and of course Seamus had to tap out so you know what I think it's time to get them ups and them down so Monday Night Raw May 6 2024 you are getting an up that's right you are getting it up because there were at least two matches and the CM Punk that I really enjoyed. My name is Aaron. Thank you for joining me with 8 Minutes with Aaron. I will see you next time when we go over more things, more stuff. And you know what? Probably there's new Naruto Funko Pops. See you next time. Bye.